So, check this out. The A7 IV has got the tilter cage on there, the 35G Master lens, the tilter matte box uh, with the, of the ND filter in there as well. So it's a very heavy setup. And it takes it like a dream. Hey, what's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. And what, what's in this bag? It, you can probably see on the front there, it says Zhuin right there. This is the Zhuin Weeble 3. And this is this is a very interesting backpack. It's actually quite big for such a small gimbal. But uh, this gimbal may be small, but it backs a pretty big punch. It can handle the Sony a7 IV with my cage, the 35 millimeter lens and the tilter matte box system. It's amazing, it is so strong, and it's a really interesting design. It's got this pad here for the wrists, and it's got this really interesting adjustable handle. It's got a light, it's got a microphone. This thing is packed with everything, and the algorithm in this is the best to date. Hands down, it is so good. It's very reminiscent of this one right here, the M3, but obviously this one doesn't handle big full frame cameras. This one does. So let's get into the video. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about this light right here, the FR100C. This is by Zhuin. It's a 100 watt tube light. What? So as you can see here, this is the Weebill 3. This is the newest generation of the Zhuin gimbals. And this is a nice adjustable handle on the left hand side. You essentially can adjust the angle and obviously the length on this thing. They've created this thing with ergonomics pretty much in mind. Now it's got this wrist support on this side as well. So it is suited to right hand people. Left hand people obviously have to get used to using, you know, this gimbal with this one. And ergonomically, it feels nice and fine. There are many pros of this gimbal and there are obviously a few cons which I will be explaining in this video, but we're gonna be going in depth to what this thing can do, who is it for, and should you actually buy this thing? So let's get into some of the specs. So the Weeble 3 is a gimbal and it's the 10th generation gimbal from Zhuin. It has a simplified structure, it's constructed real sturdy and it's lightweight with weighing just over one kilogram. It has the ever so popular 18650 batteries and this makes it last 21 hours of runtime. It has six shooting modes including panorama, time-lapse, hyperlapse, cortex, go mode and portrait mode. Has a dual quick release plate for easy camera mounting and battery changes. It features a built-in noise cancelling microphone for clear audio recording, a built-in 1000 lumens professional light that has dual color temperature. And it has the new feature with wrist rest and extendable sling grip to give you support and save you effort when filming. All up, the combo package is 529 or you can just get the regular package, which is 449 US. Now, yes, I did say 21 hours of battery life. Like how the hell can this last 21 hours? That is incredible. Obviously, when you uh, attach the light, when you start using a microphone, when you have a really heavy camera, it's going to chew up the battery a lot faster. So you probably wouldn't get 21 hours, but 21 hours is insane. Not many gimbals can actually last that long. Now, this one doesn't have a removable battery. The batteries are internal, so you just charge it through the USB-C. Now, in terms of the design, let's talk about the design. There is the focus wheel on the front, so if you do attach a focus motor on here, you do have it on the front, which I absolutely prefer. I'm not a fan of using two hands. If I have to, I want to be able to hold the gimbal with another hand, have a dual handle, and be able to focus focus with this front wheel. I really love that feature. And when it comes to this wrist support right here, you, you think, okay, well, why would I need a wrist support? I never would need it. But then when you have it, you're like, wow. 
Okay, I completely understand why they have this. But like I said, this isn't designed for left hand people in mind. You do actually have to be right handed for this because the control, the mode button and the record button is on the left hand side for your thumb. So it's not really suited to left hand people, but that doesn't mean that you can't be left handed and not use this right handed. Really depends on your filming style anyway. Now also, this is a pretty random fact, but you can actually use the Weeble S base plate on the Weeble 3, and you're thinking, well, why the hell would I use a Weeble S base plate? Because uh, it's this is the Weeble 3 and it's got its own base plate. Well, I've got the Weeble S and I love the base plate on that, and then I haven't actually done it on any other models, but uh, it's really great because it's got a Manfrotto base plate, and then it also turns into an Arca Swiss plate. I use Arca Swiss for pretty much absolutely everything, it's just a really cool thing, but uh, it does, obviously the Weeble 3 does come with its own dual quick release system, and you know, I do love it, but uh, I, I know you guys don't care, but uh, I can't show you the Weeble 3 base plate, uh, well, because I lost it. I lost it within my move. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Shh. Now they have regressed when it comes to the screen. The WeBuild 2 had this big flip out screen and now they've reverted back to just a regular small LCD screen. It isn't touchable, but you can go through all the features on here through the menu, or you can just click the mode dial on the side and just get into those, you know, quick pan follow or follow or POV. It really depends on what kind of modes you wanna be choosing and how you wanna be shooting. But they have added in that light at the front. That is an interesting feature. I've never used it, but if you did actually wanna be using it, you can actually have it, especially when it comes to just adding just that little bit of key light or fill light. It's actually quite strong. All you need to do is long press it and boom, it turns on. That's at 100% right now. And it goes from 2600 all the way up to 5400 Kelvin. So uh, you get obviously little gel pieces that you can put on the front here that you can change the color tone if you really wanted to. It really depends. I mean, it could be really cool for music videos. It could be cool for any kind of lighting or just you know a little bit of eye light. It really depends on how you actually wanna be utilizing this. But uh, I mean, it's, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it right. Now the microphone. The microphone is a really interesting feature. And it, I guess if you are using a shotgun mic, the shotgun mic most likely would be the best option. So when it comes to the shotgun mic on top of the gimbal, it's not the payload that's the issue. It's actually the clearance. Like most gimbals, the clearance is gonna be issue when you actually have that shotgun mic on the top. Now that is the great thing why they actually have a microphone on the gimbal itself that you can attach into the camera so that you won't have any of these clearance issues. Now, if you do have these kind of issues, you're gonna obviously have to mount the shotgun mic somewhere else on the gimbal, or you could go the wireless lab systems. Is it of me? What is it? You wanna talk? Hello. <laughs> well, this is the microphone that's coming directly out of the gimbal. And then, This is the internal microphone that's in the A7IV, isn't it? Let's go to the next one, house. And I think this is one of the coolest features of this thing, and I think every gimbal should have this, and that is this beast right here. So this is pretty much just a, a tool that you can obviously undo your base plates and all those kind of things. It just makes it so handy. You're not just using your keys, you're not using a coin. Uh, I think the lucky thing for me is that with my A7 IV cage, it has one inside the cage as well, but I know a lot of people don't use cages and I know a lot of people don't actually carry one of these on them. So it just hides underneath the gimbal right here. Every, every gimbal should have it, hands down. Now, when it comes to the design here, you can actually lay this flat onto a table right here with the bottom here, or it does come with the tripod mount at the bottom as well. So it really depends on how you actually wanna have that. Uh, I generally have it just like this as is, balance it like this, I keep the tripod in the bag sometimes, but obviously if you are putting this onto a pretty uneven surface, I do suggest use that tripod base anyway. 
Now, one of the biggest pros, in my opinion, happens to be the ability to customize this front dial right here. Now, I've got it customized so I can use it as the tilt function because my thumb isn't really in the correct spot to be using this joystick here. And if I am under sling, I wanna be able to control that tilt up and down because I've got it in pan follow to do all that motion, tilt up and tilt down is so much easier with this front little trigger. So I'm very thankful for them to be giving us that ability to customize all these buttons. And now we can't just talk about the Zhiwin's gimbals. We're gonna be talking about the Five Array FR100C. Now they have released a brand new light tube and this is a very, very bright light. You've probably seen a little bit of a kick light in majority of my most recent videos. This thing is, Pretty compact and it's got six fans on the back because it's a hundred watt light. Let's bring this up to 100% right now. Damn, this thing is bright. Currently, this is my key light. This is an SL200, so it's a 200 watt light and I'm gonna be turning it off and then I'm gonna use this and bounce this into the big diffuser right there. And this is what you got. This is at 100%. I even need to tone this down to like maybe, let's go 70%. This is at 70%. And look at that. That is still really, really bright. So this light has a Kelvin range from 2700 to 6200 Kelvin. It's completely RGB. And like I showed you before, it's got some incredible power. This thing is an absolute beast for the size. And now obviously there are six fans on the back because yeah, it does get a little bit hot because it's a hundred watt light. And uh, that's very, very powerful for a stick light like this. Now, I think the really good thing about this one is that you can charge it via USB-C or DC power input, which obviously is included. And only the smaller ones that I have over there that can be charged via USB-C. The larger ones, you have to charge it via DC. This one you can charge via USB-C, which is so convenient when you are on the road and you don't have any DC adapter. You can just plug it directly into that USB-C. Every light tube should have that feature. Now you can use this as a kick light, fill light, or you can actually use this as a complete key light. It really depends on your usage, but this thing is powerful enough to be used in so many different ways. So overall, let's be real. There are so many gimbals out there today, but uh, this is probably Zhiwin's best gimbal to date, especially when it comes to that algorithm, the design quality, and just the overall innovation of what they're doing today. And I really can't wait for the Crane 3S update because uh, a gimbal on top of that thing is going to be incredibly amazing for larger camera setups. And this one is really great for that mid-tier to small camera setup, so. I'm happy for you guys, uh, and I'm obviously happy to recommend this because it's a fantastic gimbal, and you won't go wrong if you did pick one of these up. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.